Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fanyana Live. Statistics has shown that 19.1%, which equals 47.1 Americans, are suffering with mental health issues. That's an additional 1.5 also. That's, and, and let me include that we're not talking about the undiagnosed millions that are still out there that are afraid to talk about what's going on in their lives. On today's segment, we have Chastity Butler, which is a licensed professional counselor. I call her a mental health specialist on the show. I want y'all to welcome her on tonight. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, I'm so grateful to have you here, my sister. So why don't you give us just a little bit of background about who you are? Okay, well, um, for those who may not know who I am, I'm Chastity Butler. Um, born and raised in Northeast Louisiana, born okay. and raised in Tallulah. Okay. Um, but I have been a part of the Monroe, Louisiana community now for 22 years. Um, I moved here in the year of 2000 with a four-year-old in tow to go to grad school, and I never left. Um, went to grad school at ULM. Okay. Majored in counseling, and the rest is pretty much history. And you're doing um, what you do. And I do what I do. And this <laughs> is my passion. This is what I love to do to um, educate the community, especially the African-American community, yes. on uh, mental health issues and mental health awareness. That's right. So let's, let's get into this. Sure. So why don't you tell us some early signs of mental health? Well, let's first, let's differentiate what, what we're talking about. Mental health, everybody has mental health, whether it's good or bad. Okay. okay. So when we talk about mental health, we're talking usually talking about uh, mental health as it relates to a mental health disorder or okay. an illness. So I, I choose to say mental health illness. Okay. Um, because we all have mental health. Okay. Um, but mental health illness, um, there depending on what the condition is, and we we won't know until there's a diagnosis, diagnosis or yeah. an assessment of some sort that's made. But there can be any number of um, early warning signs. If we're talking about depression, you can have someone, um, the typical signs, which is, you know, sadness, isolating. Um, what about depression? Uh, self, right. Self, uh, Self-deprecating talk. Okay. That, that is what we typically think of when we talk about a depressed individual. But also some early warning signs, because sometimes we can we can put the face on. Okay. We, we, you know, there is no typical face of depression because someone can present as happy go lucky um the life of the party and go home and try to harm themselves right so there can be any number of uh early warning signs we just have to hone in and have to know what we're looking for so okay so so tell me why do you think that people suffer with mental illness mm -hmm. as well the, the you know we're talking about mental illness okay. what are some reasons why people would suffer from mental illness well for one it and that's another thing any number of factors like um, certain factors that we may be used to putting on the face. All right. We may be the person that everybody goes to. You know, have you seen the the catch line? Check on your your strong friends. They always say they that. Always oh, say it's that. always on it's, social it's media. Everywhere. But that is the person that actually may need someone to reach out to them. Hmm. A lot of people we may not uh, reach out for help because we could be typically considered the strong friend. That's right. Um, we may be embarrassed. We may yeah, not we be like used. Talk. Right. We may not be used to um, showcasing our vulnerability, even though everybody has vulnerability. Right. We may not want people to know that, hey, I'm dealing with something. I need some help. We may not know who to reach out to. We may not trust people. So there are a lot of reasons why the average individual won't reach out for help. Hmm. And it's sad because uh, with the rise of, I mean, we've heard everything in the last two years with this global pandemic that's going yes. on. Yeah, uh, it oh has my God. thrust mental health and mental health issues into the spotlight, into the forefront. That's A right. lot of money is being poured into mental health uh, programs and things of that right. nature. But still, we still have some people who are not comfortable reaching out for that help. And talking about it. Or talking about but it. But see, but this is the thing, though, that I took notice of, especially when it comes to social media. Uh -huh. A lot of individuals are now going 
to social media as though it's an outlet. Mm -hmm. You know, since I don't really have anybody that I can speak to, especially right. family. You got family members, you have friends, you got your husband, you got your, you got your wife. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, it, it, it's so many people in the world. But instead of you going to that individual or that that best friend or that coworker or that colleague, what you do is you go on social media and, and you say, you know what, I, I'm bored. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they have sleep deprivation. You know, right. I can't sleep at night. You know, that they online all hours. We be hours of the right. night. Well, and then social media itself can become an addiction. Um, Talk now, about that addiction. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I feel like social media is a good thing. Yes. But as with anything, social media, you can have too much of a good thing. Okay. Um, a lot of people have, and kids and adults right. alike, have become or are becoming addicted to social media addicted to um an online presence yeah or an online persona yeah interested or addicted to looking at someone else's life um come on so and it can social media can be a great avenue to reach out for help because heretofore especially before the pandemic yeah a lot of people weren't doing like telehealth sessions yeah. with their counselors yeah but now uh, you know, when the pandemic hit and we were all isolated, that was the only way that we could connect with uh, loved ones as well as That's right. professionals, mental health professionals right. and physical health professionals. Right. It became a lifeline. But like I said, with everything, we it can become corrupted and it, it can, can become be. too much. And, and it is a bit too much because, um, and I, I wanted to talk about seven days ago, seven days ago, a woman in Brooklyn, Coney Island, she drowned three of her children. Now this is what, what really stuck out to me. The family was well aware of the mental issues that she was suffering from. They knew the financial instability that she had. Along with that, they knew that she was being evicted. Also knew that she was um, fighting a court battle with the, with the, the father of the children. Okay. She drowned the children. What got me was, this is this the kicker. Each family member made a statement and said, we knew. Mm -hmm. We knew what she was going through. Mm -hmm. You know, she reached out for help, but nobody came to the rescue. Why? She reached out. She asked, I need somebody to keep the children. Mm -hmm. This is happening all over the world. It we is. see mothers, we have homemakers that are depressed. The they're, they're, drinking their, they're drinking their lives away. They, what, what, they're finding so many different addictions instead of going to a counselor or seeing a psychiatrist or going to the church. Right. I mean, you can bring the church into the, right. you know, into the arena. But the thing is, people are fearful when it comes to telling and what they think is their business. Right. Because exactly. so often we've been told to sweep it under the rug. Oh, we have And you know the saying, what it, they told us. Right. You know, what goes on in our house. Stays in our house. There we go. But that, you know, that very concept mm -hmm. is probably the root cause of a lot of people dying Come unnecessarily. On. Yeah. Um, but I want to go back to what you said. You mm -hmm. said that a lot of her family members and I they were well aware. support mm -hmm. system was aware. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the average person may not understand or be aware of ways that they can help okay so i don't know in this particular situation mm -hmm. but for one they may not have known exactly what to do right. how many times or how many people do we know right now who are going to through some of the things that you said yeah financial instability right uh things going on with a significant other a custody battle mm -hmm. um Domestic violence. Domestic violence. Right. Being evicted. Yeah. I probably can name, without even really thinking too hard, mm -hmm. probably five people right now that might be going through wow. one or more of the situation that you just mm -hmm. named. So they may have known that she was going through this, but they might have been going through their own struggles. They may have needed someone to help them, but they didn't really know how to help this particular individual and without knowing you know the, the ins and outs yeah. of the case what was going on you know that probably could be a, a case study that i would love to to kind of delve deeper into but we know yeah. a lot of people that are going through things and we may not know how to reach out or we're not comfortable in reaching out for that help and or see, stepping in like you said um 
we're taught, we've been taught yeah. historically, especially in the African American community, yeah. to keep things, you know, behind closed keep doors. Keep it hidden. Keep it hidden. Don't speak you know, on if it. If we don't talk about it, it'll eventually go away. Right. No, it, it probably won't. It'll probably get worse. And if it doesn't end like this with someone or some kids dying, mm -hmm. what we do is pass it on to the next generation. And see, see, and, and you are accurate about that because uh, I, I kind of feel that when I see situations that brew over a period of time, it mm -hmm. could be some traumatic experiences that has happened to that individual. And then by them never dealing with it right. or the family member or the mother knowing mm -hmm. if the child was raped, I'm just saying, whatever be it made, whatever it was, whatever it but you never dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You never got no help. Right. And then the crazy part, now this, this is the truth is, many people didn't even know how to go get help. They right. didn't know that you can go see a therapist because normally what was stated is that you're crazy. Exactly. And we don't want something's to wrong crazy. with you. She, she's also, schizophrenic. I hate to say it, but in the in the black community, oh, Lord. especially we have a and I can't even say that it is unfounded, but we have a, a serious distrust for medical professionals and mental health professionals because we they feel like. You know, we've, we've heard about the Tuskegee experiment yeah. and uh, all these things that happened in the past right. where black people were used pretty much as guinea pigs. Okay. And we were not helped even when we sought help, if that makes sense. It does. We, so we have this innate or this internalized distrust of professionals. Counseling, thank God it has gotten more uh, mainstream, mm -hmm. but... 20 years ago, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and, you know, beyond, I don't know of anybody in our communities <laughs> that would have sought out the assistance of a counselor. Well, you know, we had guidance. anything. You know, we had guidance counselors that was in the school system. Different. And I'm going to tell you, different I things. used mine. It was very different, but if I was going through a situation, mm -mm, and I did, I didn't feel comfortable I knew. going to my guidance counselor. I did. I thought they were uh, only there to help you figure out, you know, where you want to go to college. Good, I must have to go to the I, military. I expelled. I just okay, I, I, I let it all out, okay. and, and all of them love me to this day. Mm -hmm. But I used. I, I, they were available to me. I right. thought that they were guidance. Guidance, the word mm -hmm. guidance and counselor. I'm like, okay, she gonna, she guide, gonna guide me. me. She yeah. gonna guide me, exactly. help me, and because I'm going too. through right even, now. Even in schools, you have to, you have to kind of know what you're dealing with because yeah. a school counselor is very much so different than say a marriage and family therapy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Or a mental health. But we never heard of that. We didn't know. So right now, you know, and that's a good thing that, like I said earlier, that counseling and mental health issues have become or are becoming more mainstream they're more prevalent more now than being ever being able to access right that um you know the assistance that a, a counselor can bring so you know what i i do want to say this now being a mental health professional mm -hmm. a licensed professional counselor as right. you are mm -hmm. you are mo most of the time in the face of so many people mm -hmm. and they're just basically dumping mm -hmm. you're carrying so many burdens mm -hmm. as a counselor what you do now that has come over time and i'm glad you asked that. yes now, i wanted to a, ask you as a new counselor okay i did i i it I was overwhelming almost i internalized a lot i wow. took it home was thinking about it all the yes, time yes yes but now i'm almost 20 years into this okay profession, yes and i have learned to assist and detach at the come same on. time because, you know, I like that. every I like individual, that. you know, I have my own things going on. on as well. So right. if I take on the the issues and the problems mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. clients, then I'm going to be in pretty bad shape after right. a while. Right. But I was on uh, another show a, a couple of months ago, and I think you had her on your show uh, not too long ago, Ms. Mm -hmm. Jamie May. Yeah, that's my I was girl. On it and I talked about, she had a whole, her sh whole show was about self-care. Okay. Um, and that's what I consider. That's I remember one of that. my specialties is self care. And a lot of people think that self care is, you know, the the mani pedis, the brunches, the massages. Talk about that self care. That. Self care is Tell them not about self -care. just that. Self care, what is, self -care? is actually putting your and a lot of people think because uh, I'm going to say something that Talk people about are not used to hearing. Uh huh. But putting yourself first is not selfish. 
because you can't pour from an empty cup. Make if it make sense. I don't take care of myself first, I have nothing to give to anyone else. Mm. My kids, my spouse, my work family, Break it down. my community. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything. So I have to take care of myself first and put some of my needs first before I can go out into my community and be my best self. So that's what I really hone in on like with a it. lot of clients. Self-care self is not just a, a manicure or a massage or a brunch with your girlfriend. Yes, yes I love, I do all of those things and I try to do them regularly. So you're talking about but physical is, wellness, mental, mental the wellness, whole the whole package. package. Yes. Right. Self-care is also... Soul, mind, mind, body, and spirit. Everything. Yes. Self-care is also doing right by other people. Come on. Self-care is all of those things that we have to strive to that not only makes us better people, but make us... And make the people around you, right. too. It makes everybody around us better, and we can be our best self for our community. Mm. So that's what self-care is, in my opinion, um, and as it relates to this whole mental health thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of people don't take care of themselves. They do. We not. always looking out for they, everybody else. That's the thing. And that's we what I'm fail, talking about. We fail ourselves because we, we don't take care of ourselves. We self. pour out into mm. so many other people. And you got to be replenished. Have, you got to replenish. Yeah, who who yes. replenishes us? I know. We have to do that for ourselves sometimes. Well, when you talk about being replenished, and, and you know, I have to bring the spiritual aspect in. Of course. Um, that's, that's prayer. Mm -hmm. That's worship. Right. I mean, that's, that's being in the company of people that... People like you, people that motivate, inspire, right. people that encourage you, people that lift you up, people that exactly. build you. And Those spirituality are the type of is on. a component yes. of this what we what we call self care. We That's can't right. ignore mm. our spiritual selves. That's right. We have to pay attention to that. We That's have right. to feed that person. We have mm -hmm. to feed that inner person. Like I said, before we can go out and be affected mm -hmm. with anybody else. So y'all hear that? So she, you, you see what she's talking about, the overall well-being? Yes. That And she's even talking about physical. That means you got to work out. You, 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 right you got to... She took the words out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You have to have eat, uh, healthy eating habits. Right. You have to speak positive. I know something. I know That's stuff tick you off. But yes. a lot of the mental health, and I know she's going to get into this, but I wanted to kind of speak on a cynical mindset. Mm -hmm. Negativity. Yeah, we get it all the time. We do. We do, and that's a part of that's a part of some of this mental anguish that people are dealing and, with, and because of the stuff you, that you take in with your eye gate out. and your ear gate, especially on yes. social media. You're taking all of this inf information mm -hmm. and you're downloading all of this into your mm -hmm. spirit, and you're trying to figure out why you can't sleep at night. Well, God didn't create you to be a God, number one, that's and He didn't it. create you to be up all night. You're not a knock girl. Yeah. That's how you you you're a mammal. Right. Are we mammals? And I can tell we are. We're mammals. And I can tell, you know, by some things on social media, because a lot of people say, well, you know, you can't tell who I am on social media because I disagree. But I disagree. I disagree. We're in the same if, vein. Yes, ma'am. I can see your social media or Come even on. when I meet you and whatever you're speaking, if you're pessimistic all the time mm -hmm. if you are negative and everything that or comes empath out, right. right if mm -hmm. you're you know ir irritable mm -hmm. or always speaking negatively mm -hmm. about the next person whether you know them or not mm -hmm. i can pretty much that gives me an idea of what you have going on internally because a oh, lot of times yes you, you don't have to say anything you don't have to say it at right. all but when you do say something i can kind of tell what you're what you're going through because a positive person mm -hmm. if you're constantly taking in positivity you expel positivity that's right if you're taking in or if you're constantly surrounded by that's right negativity right. whatever the case may be come on whether you're not happy in your marriage whether you're not happy in your relationship mm. whether you're stressed at work yes. whether you're overworked yes. whether you have you know five kids and and no help right what are you doing about that um how is it being how is that being expelled in your life how are you releasing yeah. how yeah. are you replenishing yourself because it, apparently you're you're giving a lot to the job or your family or whatever how are you replenishing that that's it so that's it's it. all about a mindset as well so so what do you think about um speaking daily affirmations and, and, Ooh, and, and I'm big on that. so I'm big yeah, on let me that. tell you why i'm doing going. myself right so do you, let me tell you what i'm leaning to because we know that um when you go to a doctor uh -huh. and they have di diagnosed you with an illness okay. of any sort the first thing they're going to say is, 
I'm going to put you on that pill. Right. So you say you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on that pill. Right. You say that um, you're having uh, depression, you know, uh, you're full of anxiety. You're having mm -hmm. panic attack. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on that pill. By the time right. you leave the doctor, you might have a pills that you're about to leave with. But And that's when I think that you become an advocate for yourself. Mm. Okay? We don't always know what's going on with us. We might know that somewhere we're, um, you know, we're, we're unbalanced. Okay. Whether it be mentally or physically or both. Mm -hmm. That is when I don't want to say that appeal is necessarily wrong. But when a doctor or a medical professional may not know what's going on with that's you, what, that's, that's what they're yes, trying to do. Yes. But we, we, we have to be advocates for ourselves. If we know that something is going on within our home um, and that may be taxing and stressing us out, appeal might is, is probably not going to help that. You got to go and get to the root of the issue because appeal won't, have, won't, won't help that. So, and, and I'm listening to what you're saying, so... Just because, and I'm going to say homemakers, Yeah, they're at home. Mm -hmm. You know, they're taking care of the kids. They're, you know, cleaning the house. They're, right. they're cooking for the, the, the family. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these mothers get overwhelmed. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have a mental illness. It does it not. May, it means that you're stressed out. And you it need just to means that you look, you might need rest. to go take a walk. Right. But, and that's right. the thing. This is what people need to know. It doesn't always mean that you're having a mental health scare mm -hmm. or that, you know, you're going undiagnosed because... You don't know what's going on with you and what it is. You feel like the walls are caving in. But really, all you need to go do is relax. Go relate relax. a little. Relax, relate, relate. And, and, talk, and <laughs> relax. talk to somebody. And just go talk to somebody. Right. right. But we'll instantly say, well, you know what? I'm at home. I always got the kids. Baby, that just means you need to just go go take you. Go run. Go this get a hobby. Too. This is the thing, Get too. your hobby. This is the thing, too. Yeah. As women. Now, I do focus a lot on the African-American community. But just think about the African American woman, the African, the average okay. African American. Let's let's just stay right there. Okay. With the African American woman, what have we been taught for generations, for years, hundreds of years? What have we been taught? What have we done? We have taken the burden of the the world, the world on our on shoulders. On our shoulders, we have. We do that right now. Mm -hmm. And so to take a break from our kids or to take a step back and say, I need a day, I need a week to just come, it's, it's frowned upon. Because now you ain't a strong black woman. If you, you know, need a break, you know, we have been taught that we have to continue to do, 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 and take on everything but that's in it order. It's very unbalanced. But it's, it's just, it's very just way unbalanced. It's, yeah. And we have to learn how, again, to not think that this is a selfish thing, self -care. but to self take care of self yes. first. I push that. I push that I love because that. we I not, absolutely yeah, love it. We we can't, you know, shirk our responsibility. Come on. But we can take care of ourselves while we mm -hmm. while we take on our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So what would be some techniques? Let's talk about techniques. We, we're okay. talking about self care. We're talking about mental right. health right now, mm -hmm. and we, 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 we're we're no, we're we're taking in that everything is not mental health. Mm -hmm. Everything no, is not. not now everything is not, is not, a, not a, a condition. Everything is not a condition. Right. But we don't know, want it to become one. either. We don't want it to become right. one. So what are the ways? Since you're talking about becoming, what are some of the ways to keep us from not becoming a statistic when it comes to, to becoming to, overwhelmed? Is what what we talked about the the whole taking a step back. Because stress... So you got to evaluate the situation. Eva you got to yes. see what it is. That's how come whenever someone comes into into to, to see me or into one of the agencies mm -hmm. that I consult with, right. um, an assessment is done. Because everybody is... Nobody is going to be the same. No, as two the next people are the same. Right. No, not at so all. So we, we try to provide individualized care. But that requires an assessment of everything that that's going on with you. What does, so, what, what, what does an assessment look like? And, and I, I know you can't speak a whole lot on, but what does yeah. that assessment look like? A whole Tell lot the people, of questions. Because we have a, so the thing is, you know, we were just making, we made statements early on that many of you do not want to go and see a counselor. Right, right. You don't want to see a licensed counselor. Mm -hmm. So here she is, and she's going to probably just give a few, drop a few nuggets as mm -hmm. to what that questionnaire may look like. So you don't be fearful to go in there and say, hey, 
I think good. I got a problem. Right. Something ain't right in my household. I need somebody I need to talk to. Right. So what, what, what would that assessment look like? An assessment is basically, in a nutshell, a whole lot of questions. A questionnaire. I'm going to ask you Q &A? questions. Q&A? Like, yeah, <laughs> really. And, and a lot of, you know, if you were to come in into my office mm -hmm. and I, we were to do an assessment, I would basically first tell you, you know, I'm here for you. I'm not the police. I'm not here to judge that's not my job and it's I'm confidential here, and it's confidential that i part. can't say anything of Nothing. That. i can't even say that you walk through these doors because mm -hmm. you're not gonna get sued right mm -hmm. I, no no I'm not <laughs> therefore gonna, i need to keep all my all, my coins. all your coins but yes. if you were to come in i'm gonna ask you questions about you your life your environment um health wise if you you know if you use substances um to cope because a lot of people yeah. use kind of substances and to that's cope. where the schizophrenia and all that because you well, know people think that they're kind of losing it i notice when people are on drugs mm -hmm. they either hyperventilate or certain drugs will can certain, trigger uh psychosis yeah um but many times with if a person has been diagnosed with schizophrenia that is a biochemical thing it's it's hereditary but it can really? yes but a psychosis can be triggered by street drugs um also and it can mimic schizophrenia it can mimic it can mimic it doesn't necessarily mean that, that you're that schizophrenic exactly ah. you have if if i you know went out here and you know got get a hold of something that i don't need to lord you know I we could, went for me let me just put that it out could there. make me I trip out and on the outside looking in it may look like i'm talking to myself and i'm having um a schizophrenic episode i know what that's really, like i just had some bad Look, clothes. I know what that was like. Now, when I was growing up, this is a testimony. You know, <laughs> I never forget this. Y'all always want to try something. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like, bro, y'all hit this, hit, hit the weed. Mm -hmm. I was like, the weed? Baby, it wasn't for me. All I know is I was paranoid. Now, are you sure you had some weed and it wasn't something else in there? It was the weed. It was it was in a white wrapper. Mm -hmm. We was on our, we was in high school. Mm -hmm. It was a white, they call it a little Nick bag. Mm -hmm. It was in the, it was a little, little wrapper. And, um, everything was funny, but I noticed that, you know, I was, everything was in slow motion. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I thought, I said, Lord, this ain't, can't be for me. So the night yeah. I went to sleep, uh -huh. I was like, now nah, lay me down to sleep. <laughs> and the Lord, my soul to keep. If anymore. I should die, I, I didn't do that. Anymore. It wasn't for Fanyana. Mm -hmm. So I do believe what you're saying because I, you tried weed in me. Yeah, baby. And I tried to go to the emergency room the next morning. Mm. And my friends say, fool, they gonna find out when they check your blood. You you smoke some weed. I said, okay. So but I really but it, it eventually it just it it, yeah, it, it, it died off. It left right. me. But I understand what you're saying right. because I really thought something was wrong with me. Exactly. And it was like, girl, you just high. Mm -hmm. And I said, Why? Well, I said, right. I don't want to be high no more. And see, and you know, those kinds of things, yeah. Everybody is gonna experience yeah different right um so i i'm not sure what all was in that little well i think back in I, i'm thinking back in 94 95 mm -hmm. i mean right. we, we really did mm -hmm. it was just a little white rapper mm -hmm. and that's all it was and we that's know how your we, body that's how your body reacted responded to that. yes right, right. and it, it i was just on a what what, what you know you, you know that runner's high mm -hmm. but it was it was times 12. oh wow yeah, it was, okay. it was, I was higher than high. I, I, my, I was close to Jesus, I thought. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so boys and girls, we here right here. Just say no to drugs. Just say no to drugs. Just say no to drugs. Yeah, or definitely. if you don't um, and you have any issues, come see me. That's um, right. Yeah, that's can, right. We can help you with that, too. Yeah. And see, let me tell y'all something. There's nothing wrong with telling your testimony because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Right. So anybody that's watching, because I got a lot of children, a lot of Rick's children love me. Gotcha. But y'all, I'm letting y'all know, Miss Fanyana tried something, and it just went for her. And I don't want you to go through that either. Because we don't want you coming to look at the people. We don't want you coming over here to my, I think I got a problem. It wasn't nothing but a little weed. There yeah. you go. Yep. So, um... I pray you guys enjoyed this segment. I mean, I ain't even trying to end right now. We talked about a lot, a heck of a lot of things. But um, look like we have some questions. My husband is um, showing me the phone. Okay. And we have a lot of questions for you. You want okay. me to read them all? Yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, so Charlie Butler said, most want to help but don't know how to help. Right. 
We talked about that And she that talked earlier. about that. Yeah, she talked definitely about talked that about that. Mm -hmm. Did you want to kind of hone in on that? Sure. If you, if you or someone that you know or love, you feel like they are experiencing something and they need some help, there's nothing wrong with approaching that person right. out of respect and out of concern and asking them, hey, is everything okay? Is there something that I can do? If, and, you know, depending on what they say, um, you can go from there. But you have some individuals who are a little more secretive, a little more standoffish and closed. And that way, you may not be on the out, can do something uh, right away. But giving those people the number to different resources, if you're noticing, um, yes. like, like, I think you were talking about mm -hmm. the lady that ended the, the, up seven days ago, the one in Coney yeah, Island that just uh, murdered her children. She drowned right. the children Drowning her and kids. the family were all aware now. Right. So in, in her case, if she didn't feel comfortable reaching out or accepting the help, then sometimes we have to take uh, matters into our own hands. Um, if, if someone noticed that the kids were not being uh, tended to or being neglected, and they, and they noticed sometimes that we have to get outside entities involved. That's right. As a counselor, teachers, doctors, nurses, those kind of people, we're considered mandated reporters. That's so right. So if we notice something, we have to get other people involved. Right. They may not like it. But it is really for their own good, for their good and those that they may be tending to, their kids or uh, whoever they may be taking care of. It's not the most popular thing, but sometimes we have to get go ahead and get outside people involved to go and check on that person. Okay, so Deborah Maiden, and thank you so much. Deborah Maiden, thank you, Charlie Butler. Deborah Maiden Speed said domestic, and I know she's talking about domestic violence in our culture. She said, you've been taught to keep family secrets. Right. And we did discuss that as well. Right. That is so true. Family secrets are killing us, y'all. Um, you got to tell it. You have to. You we can't, can't be do fearful. everything. We can't do everything on our own. Right, if right. If we find ourselves in a situation where um, we're, we're victims of domestic violence. Right. If you cannot get away, um, something has to be done to where... You, you may be able to, to break away. Um, a lot of people, when I say that you feel like you can't break away, mm -hmm. psychologically, mm -hmm. sometimes we are bound psychologically. And okay? we are. Just like, it, and I'm just asking, is that door open right here? Mm -mm. It's locked. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just say if it was business hours. Right. It's typically unlocked, right? Yeah. Psychologically, when we're psychologically broken and beaten down, a door can be unlocked. But yeah. we would be too scared to walk through it. Yeah. Okay. I feel we that. We could know that uh, our, our perpetrator is gone to work. That's right. He or she may not be back for eight, nine, ten hours. Yeah. But we're so psychologically bound, we still won't go through that door and no. run and get, get help. But see, and see, see, that's when you have to break barriers. You have to. And that's where the it's, spirituality it's, right, right. has to come into play. Because God is, and I, I know some people don't always often want to hear this but God is always available for mm -hmm. us his hands are always extended out to us there are moments that when you're down in your spirit and you're depressed sometimes you're gonna you, you got to cry it out but in that moment of tears God will collect those in a bottle and even though you can't speak he knows what you're saying he understands your moans and your groans and I think that and I also and I this is what I really believe mm. whenever we connect yeah. with our spiritual spirituality mm -hmm. and and we pray that when we're done praying mm, it's a release it's a release yeah but we still have to act because faith with our works is dead is dead mm -hmm. so i do believe in those moments that we are connecting with with our father yeah that he will give us something he will put something down on the inside of us he will. that makes us act he will get you he will and, give he'll, you and i think that he'll give us a way out if we feel like we are so oh God, psychologically just broken that we can't, you know, reach out, I feel like he will bring somebody to us. And and I believe it's that because... It's always that ram. I believe that because, see, the thing is, he said he'll provide the way of escape. He will. And, and I believe There's that. always, like you said, a door. Right. He will provide the way of escape. Like we can walk through that door. You can crawl call, to the door. We can crawl to the door or he we will have somebody, somebody to come to through the door. Come, come the on. Door. Come so on. So that's what I, we just, yes. we have to do something. That's good. You have, have to, to do, do something. something. I agree. So, um, mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. So, Hope Grimes, a good friend of mine. 
suffering in silence has become normal. Mm -hmm. It has. I, and I believe that we've that's been a running th a running theme mm -hmm. throughout what we've been talking about. Yeah, the silence, the um, being afraid to speak, yeah. the wanting to it's keep like up voiceless. appearances, right? You're voiceless, the, and even wanting to keep up appearances because we but don't want to. We don't want to appear. We don't, we don't want to appear like we don't have it all together. Yeah, we want to appear to the outside world that oh oh they live over there they have it all together. That's it. And we don't want to let people down. Yeah, that's that fake until oh, you make it that I don't that's like. It. I it's cannot. A lot of fakery when people going say on. when people it's say fake until you make it, on. I let I say no, no, no. You, you don't never fake nothing. Right. Either you're gonna be real or you're not. You right. never fake it. But that's why. But that's why she's, I agree you know, about the silence. So my mama said, "Amen." She's on the one accord, mind, body, and soul. So Deborah Maiden Smith says, "Self care is necessary on a daily basis." She agrees with you. Mm -hmm. She said, "I have to replenish my physical, mental, mental emotional needs." So that's she the received word. that. Replenish. Lake boys just saying, um, "Hello." They said a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. Say they they do receive that. Great right. job, Chastity. Yes, thank you, sis. Um, I am healed. She's also going to be on the show. Okay. Deborah Butler, I have the abundance of the heart. That's mm -hmm. a scripture. The, the mouth, mouth speaks. speaks. What's inside of you is going to come out. It has to come out. Right. So the thing is, and I, I just want to address this. When that comes out, are you listening? Because there again, we're going to go right back mm -hmm. to, to the young lady at Coney Island in Brooklyn that mm -hmm. drowned her children. Right. Now, she said the abundance of the, house, the, the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. She was speaking. Mm -hmm. And if she wasn't speaking, they never would have heard or have known or made a right. statement mm -hmm. to the media mm -hmm. that we knew about a situation. Can we say to you as a licensed counselor that mm -hmm. they failed her in some way? I think, and I'm pretty sure... They knew something was going on. But did but they feel her? In a, in a, I don't think so because, like I said, a lot of times we, we're we going oh. through some things ourselves. I, and I agree. So We may have to disagree. We, we may have to agree to disagree. Okay. But, see, this, this is this is my case in point, and I'm going to get to this, to the, yeah. to the next. Um, if somebody's constantly coming to you, mm -hmm. if a child, we'll, we'll say a child. Yeah. A child is constantly coming to you, and they're basically saying that, I'm neglected. Right. You know what's going on. Mm -hmm. The child has come to you. And then the next instant. That was that situation where I said sometimes you have to get other people You got to get other people involved. And it sounds like. But if you didn't say not nothing. You didn't say her. nothing. That, and and that's, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So we, we do agree on that. Yeah. Um, that sometimes you, you can fail people. Of because course. God could have placed that individual there for you to do something. But like you yeah. said, you know, that ain't none of my business. But I'm going to tell I you think something. The whole, with you, this situation, they make it your business when they tell it, you. But I think that even not just not knowing all the ins yeah. and outs. Right. I guess it's, we're safe, it's safe to say yeah. that not only one person failed her. But a lot of entities probably failed her because I'm sure Just her to hold kids the support was going system. to school. This was know, a yeah. Might have had a parent, and they knew the things, school. The parents knew the school. Knew. The administrators so knew. A lot of I got people it. Probably failed. All that lady. comes into play. Right. I totally agree. Um, my mother said spiritual med meditation. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, that's a form of self care. Yes, it is. Uh, self care isn't selfish. They just re 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 reiterate not. what you said. Y'all, self care is not selfish. Mm -hmm. Self care is not self. I'm gonna put that on the t-shirt. We're gonna have to make it funny. Yeah, we gonna have to. Yeah, can Mr. Rick do that? Yes, yeah, gonna, yes, he can. Make up a, a couple of slogans. I think we have addressed selfish. all of the questions on tonight. Yeah. Again, thank you everyone for tuning in. I pray that you got something, received something from our licensed counselor yes. over here. Help. Say it again. Say it one more time. Oh, licensed professional counselor. Yes, I pray that you received something, especially. From, from her lips and especially from my lips. Because at the end of the day, we do need one another. We do. Don't ever think, don't ever think that you can't go to people. And even if you, if, if it's a, the people that you think that you don't trust, find somebody. Get somebody else. God gave you the spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. There are some people out there that you can talk to. God says to cast your cares upon him because he cares for you, but also for us to carry one another's burdens. Exactly. What she does for a living, this is her livelihood. She's carrying your burdens and she's a spiritual woman, which means that she's also interceding on your behalf. Yes, Do not be afraid to speak up. And if Can we say up, that? If you speak up and you don't get any results, go to the next person. Um, keep going to someone until you get the help that you feel like you deserve. And let me tell you something. Now, I'm going to say this. 
When I was going through, I experienced depression. And this was from a previous marriage. I didn't go to a counselor. I'm going to tell you something, my spiritual people. I went to the counselor. They said, Jesus, God is a counselor. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a doctor in a sick room. Instead of me going to get medication for a diagnosis, I took the scriptures as vitamins. They were my prescriptions, okay? And I ate them on a daily basis. I fed myself spiritually and I was overcome. I believe I, every day I would stand in the mirror and I would cry and I said, God, you said you hadn't given me the spirit of fear in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, but the but power, but the, no, you hadn't given me the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So those, all those negative thoughts had to be captivated. I had to take them. I had to body slam them and I had to keep them captive because that's not who God said that I was. So along with the counselor, you also have spirituality, and both of those go, they coincide. They're one and the same. But if you don't do nothing else, always pray about it. And after you pray about it, if you need help, seek professional guidance. That is why she's here. That is why you have family members that are there. And to family members that are watching, and I know she's going to agree with me on this, if you know that your child is going through. If you know that your child is suffering, or you, you know. Yourself, or come you on, yourself talk about suffering. it. Get some help. Talk to somebody. Do not take this on your own self, mm -hmm. knowing that you cannot deal with it. You have pastors that are available. You have Titus two women in the church, deacons and deacons. Seek who you can, but most of all, seek God and seek you a professional woman or a male oh, I mean. to get that that advice that you need. I pray that y'all have been blessed. We need to, and one more thing, we want you to give out some resources. Okay. If you if you know of any resources that they may need. Um. Well, there are, like we talked about earlier, uh, mental health and mental health issues have become more and more and more to, into the mainstream and in the forefront. Mm -hmm. So depending on what your particular issues are, mm -hmm. there are resources available. Um, there are different hotlines, hotlines. and yeah, hotlines, mm -hmm. suicide lines, su mm -hmm. suicide lines, domestic violence hotlines. Yes, yes. Um, and if 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 it's something that is not of a, an emergent um, emergency or an urgent issue, then wait until the next day and call call my office. Um, call any number of mental health agencies that are in the area um, where you reside, wherever mm -hmm. you live. Mm -hmm. um, there are resources and they are readily available to assist and to help. Chastity, um, would you mind giving your information, sure. your number, you sure. know, just in case somebody would like to speak with you? Sure. I can be always reached um, on social media. You can inbox me um, if you don't want to, you know, put something to where everybody knows that you're looking for help. So you, I can always be inboxed. You can just look up my page, Chastity Butler, or you can contact my office at 318-791. 7309 and if I cannot help you personally, I can always connect you with someone or an entity that can. And we appreciate that. Thank you so much. You have one more question okay. from Deborah or Deborah Butler. Okay. Sometimes you know something is wrong, uh -huh. but you didn't realize the extent. Right. That's true. That's true. You can know something. We were talking about that. We just we know, that. We, mm -hmm. we know a million people, a hundred people that could be going through an eviction or mm -hmm. having, you know, domestic violence issues or uh, things with their kids. We just don't know the extent. Yeah. We never know that things are going to end how it ended um, until it's too late. So before That's, it's too late, yeah. mm -hmm. reach out. Reach out. I can't say that enough. I think she just ended there. Before yeah. it's too late, reach out. Because so many children have suffered in silence. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have a blessed night. And see you next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you, Chastity. Okay.